Um, thank you for coming. Um, totally good that people are sitting in the back. Later, we're going to do an exercise, which is where we have these chairs kind of in circles, but we can kind of move around when, when that part of the session starts. Um, all right. Well, thank you all. Um, so we're going to be talking about AI a little bit today. Um, and that's happening in many different sessions. Uh, I'm hoping that this one is a little bit more practical and hands-on, and we'll see where we get to. So my name is Olga. I am a product manager at the Wikimedia Foundation. I generally work on reading and readership, so I think a lot about the way that readers use the wikis on a day-to-day -day basis. And we're also supposed to have Shimon here, um, who is our movement communication specialist, but he is also on the organizing committee of Wikimania, and he was pulled to do some other important things that allow us to be here today. So apologies. Uh, he said he'll stop by and say hi at some point. But Oh, I was, I was just talking about you. <laughs> Introduce yourself if you want. All right. Um, okay, so why are we here today? We're here today to talk about AI. And in particular, we want to talk about ways that we can use AI to make the wikis a little bit easier to learn from. So one kind of quick summary on this is that we want overall a new generation of readers to read and to discover information on Wikipedia and the other wikis in new ways. And we want them to be able to discover this idea of encyclopedic information that we've been so getting really, really good at over the years. And to do that, we think that we can use our pre-existing encyclopedic content, so the text and the images that Wikipedians and Wikimedians have already built up over the years. And instead of building it out again, kind of focus on making it easier to find and easier to use for people. And we think that overall AI and machine learning and sort of machine-assisted uh, content generation can help us with that. But, um, and with a lot of our things, there's a usually important but or however. We really want this to happen in a way that's aligned with our principles. And in general, that's aligned with having humans really have access to knowledge and having humans be involved in the process of knowledge creation. So in general, we basically want anything that's AI generated to pass through the hands of humans, of our editors, in one way or another. So, you know, this kind of brings us to this question of how do we do that and how exactly do editors participate uh, in machine-generated content remixing and machine-generated um, content creation. So, um, this is all very, very early. Uh, like I said, we're going to try to keep things a little bit hands-on, but it's very early days for a lot of these ideas and especially for bringing a lot of these ideas to the website. And since we're all here at Wikimania, we thought that even though it's early days, it's actually a perfect time to start this conversation as early as possible. All right, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to talk for about 15 to 20 minutes to sort of introduce you to some of the ideas that we're going to be playing with today and some of the ideas that we have to help reading and readers on the wikis that do involve AI or machine generated content. Then we're all going to sort of split into groups and do a set of exercises on different ways that we can curate and moderate that content um, by editors on the wikis directly. And then uh, we're going to talk afterwards. Uh, we'll have each group sort of uh, discuss and do a share out of what they learned and of the way that they thought about approaching the problem. And then we're going to have a kind of more open-ended discussion and Q&A at the end. All right. So... What do our readers need? So to start off, we're going to zoom out a little bit. So we know that we want every human being to have access to the sum of all human knowledge. And you know, access can mean many things. And some of them can be more restrictive to uh, us than others. So access can mean you know, the knowledge is there, but it's actually really difficult to get to, or people do not understand how to get to it. But it's still there. It's still accessible. So to us specifically, access doesn't mean that. Access means not only giving entry points to knowledge, but also actively helping people find the knowledge that they need, and actively helping people learn from this knowledge. And we think that that's the part that we can explicitly get better at over the coming years. So 
in order to do that, we have been thinking about different ways we can reflect that and different ways we can allow and allow our thinking for readers to do that. And the way that we're thinking about it currently is what we really want is a new generation of readers. And we say new generation, that doesn't mean young readers, although it does not mean young readers. It means anyone who might not be learning properly from the wikis right now who could learn better. Um, so a new generation of readers to arrive at Wikipedia and discover a preferred destination for discovering, engaging, and building a lasting connection with encyclopedic content. So this is very dense, but once again, it comes to this idea of learning. What we really want is for humans to be able to learn from the wikis right now and in perpetuity. And you might have heard this per word perpetuity a couple of times over the course of the week, but this is what we're going for. We're going for leaving a legacy of sorts. All right, so, you know, in order to do that, which is, you know, large goals, they're often difficult to achieve, we had to really think about what is preventing us from this and what we want to uh, really think about in terms of the problems that readers are struggling with when they're trying to access knowledge. So what we found in a lot of different variations of our research is that readers mostly concretely struggle with, first thing, is content presentation. So right now, are the content itself can be really, really tricky to find. So the interface can be inconsistent. Some articles have info boxes, others do not. Some articles have tables, other do, others do not. And so for a lot of readers, what this means is that there's no consistent way for them to find somebody's birthday or to find how long a river is or other specific facts that they might have come to the wikis really, really explicitly looking for. And the other thing is that sometimes, you know, we have different kinds of readers. There's readers who are slightly more visual learners. There's readers who, you know, kind of like information in, uh, in tables or in graphs. And right now, these content formats are not necessarily engaging or easy to find. So one of the main kind of requests that we're seeing is, hey, can you just make the thing that I'm looking for easier for me to search for? The next is content availability. So we do know this. We're not going to talk about this as much today, but there's still very large content gaps on a lot of wikis, especially small to medium-sized projects. Afterwards, content discoverability. So whereas our first issue was kind of, I'm trying to find this fact and I can't find it in this really long article, this is more um, the kind of looking at that issue in a span or throughout a different session. So this is more, I'm trying to do research on this topic, but I don't know how to collect all the articles on the topic that I'm thinking about or I'm trying to just kind of hang out and be dragged into a rabbit hole on Wikipedia because that's what I've decided to do with my time today. And I don't really have an easy way to do that or I don't have a way that is engaging me in order to do that. And then finally, content credibility. So this is not just affecting us, you know. So a long time ago, we might have thought, oh, you know, content credibility is an issue on Wikipedia. People keep telling people not to use Wikipedia. As, you know, kind of AI-generated content becomes more prevalent across different parts of the internet, this is becoming an issue on the internet as a whole, and I think we need to be careful about the way that we present our content as it, you know, as separate or is in addition to some of this other content, and really to address credibility issues head on. So I'm not going to spend kind of too long on this slide, but this is sort of an example of, of what, our, uh, what our research looks like. So in this case, we have uh, this reader, who is one of our user personas. And she is a student, and she's motivated to dig deeper into topics that she studies. So she's interested in finding only the information that she needs, so very specific facts that she might use for a research paper or for her homework. And um, she's also really, really interested in making it easier to search for this information directly. All right, so looking at kind of different readers and different per what we call personas like that, we started being able to sort of co collate a lot of the different things that readers are asking for. And so, you know, we were able to sort of gather a lot of these requests into categories. And one thing that came out is that a common theme here wasn't for new content. It wasn't, oh, I, you know, I need 
content on this specific topic, on this specific article. And it was interesting because we were seeing this across a lot of different languages that do have existing content gaps. But what we were really seeing over and over again is, no, I want to find the content that's already there, and that's really difficult for me to do. So, a com so sort of the common theme was that people really want remixed, summarized, and interactive content across pages and articles so that they can have an easier time learning. So, okay, what does that have to do with AI? Well, we think, you know, AI can help. So as I mentioned, a lot of the content that people are interested in has already been created by editors. So the request here is not, let's create more stuff. It's really more about, okay, well, how do we better curate and better deliver this content to people? So how can we make it easier to discover, easier to learn from, and easier to connect different points between different pages or different articles? And, you know, you'll hear us use this word remixing a lot, and that's really kind of what we're talking about here when we talk about generation. So for the purpose of these experiments, what we really want to do is have AI help us generate things out of existing content and not instead of existing content. And we think overall this will help editors do their work better and save time. So, you know, Overall, how would this work? So we have a variety of different algorithms, um, some of which we are currently beginning to develop ourselves and learning a lot about how to do that in an open way. Um, there's a lot more information on that in other sessions. We will not be diving as deeply into that today, but I did want to uh, you know, kind of flag that. And, you know, kind of like using a lot of these models, we would like to begin some testing to see whether this is true um, and whether this is something we could use. And like I said, early days, we don't know. Maybe we find out that no, this is actually doesn't work with our model very well or this doesn't work very well for the kinds of things that we're trying to do and the kinds of things that readers need. But we're optimistic from where we are right now. So, you know, we kind of have a couple of different overall categories that we want to play with ideas with. And I'll show you some of these ideas. And, you know, there's many different things we can sort of play with and think about today. We've sketched out a few of these, but, you know, I kind of want to flag before we show it to you all and start, you know, kind of thinking about the session itself that we have not committed to building any of these. So you might have something that you really love it might not happen, and you might have something that you really hate, it also might not happen. So no, no promises on any of this. I just wanted to be really clear before we start. Um, but right, so one of the main requests that we saw is this idea for summarized or simplified content. So a lot of people were saying like, hey, you know, if we take the student example earlier, I really just want to study for my exam, and so I don't really need this entire article that might take me a couple of hours to read. I only want a quick summary. Or, I'm a younger student, I don't need the level of complexity that is here, I just really want a simplified version of this. And this is something that editors have been working on for a really long time. You know, we have a lot of examples of projects that have gotten closer to this. So Simple English Wikipedia is an example, Chikipedia on Basque Wikipedia is an example. But a lot of the times, these projects are very difficult to maintain and difficult to build up. So the question is, okay, well, can we use AI in some ways to help us do this? And we have a couple of examples that we'll be doing, that we'll be playing with a little bit in the workshop part of the session. But the simplest one is like, okay, maybe we can just put a button on the page that says summarize, and I can give you a summary, and we see how frequently people use it. That's one place that we could definitely start with. Another place, and this is an experiment that our apps are working with, is to just have AI add descriptions. So, for example, you know, this page needs a description. Can we have, you know, a machine-generated description that then can be moderated or monitored by editors in some way? Another category here, as I mentioned earlier, is recommendations and recommended content. So this is more around the area of, hey, I'm reading specifically about this topic. I would like to know more about this topic, or I would like to read things that are similar to what I'm reading right now. So, you know, same thing, pretty straightforward. Can we explore giving recommended content that is similar to what you're reading right now? And we do this in a number of different places in, in the interface right now. But the difference with this is that we would want to make it a little bit easier, so increase the prominence, and also really think very, very, very deeply on the kinds of recommendations that we are providing. So we really want to make sure that 
everything we show respects users' privacy and does not you know, necessarily gather data that we don't want to gather. And also that it is not you know, dragging people in sort of endless doom scrolls, or not doom scrolls, but endless scrolls. We want to make sure that people's sessions are healthy amount of time and that we are very, very careful about the way that we're providing recommendations so they're, you know, kind of not dragging users into sessions which we don't want them to have or which might not be healthy for them. Um, and, you know, so a part of that too is really thinking about when do we want to provide recommendations? Like, can we use signals from readers that say, oh, right now is when I actually am looking for something, like when you're starting a search, and, you know, kind of really think about, oh, this is when we want to give a recommendation. This seems like the right time. All right, and the last one is this idea of content remixing. And this is, you know, we've provided some ideas, but this is kind of a very, very, very wide area of ideas and of potential features. So this, you know, can go from uh, FAQ section or being able to pull sort of information from multiple articles that you can, you know, study from or read from or reference at the same time. It can be, you know, really focusing on galleries and focusing on images. It can mean a lot of things. So this is one of our explorations. One of the things that has come up a lot is can we represent you know content in more visual ways so something like a mind map where you can sort of see the connections between different articles or the connections between different categories so what are cool visual ways that we can use to represent that also uh, some of the other things that we've been you know kind of playing with is things like nearby so for example we're here in Kato Katowice and uh, is there things that we are that are of interest there near me? So if I want to go out on the street and walk around a little bit, of course, with permissions, can I walk around and find things that are interesting to me? Um, and so this is another kind of example playing with this idea. So that's ideas and that's all good and we have a lot of ideas and it'd be really interesting to begin experimenting with some of these and to begin testing with some of these. But, you know, we have an issue, and that issue is where do we keep our editors? How do our communities take part in this, and how do we make sure that a lot of uh, our communities have control over some of these ideas and over the output of some of these ideas? And so we're, you know, here mostly to talk about this today. So, you know, imagining that some of these features are out there, there's a few different ways that we think, you know, people can edit this type of content. So way one is the simplest. So no edits needed. We just really, really clear, clearly mark this is AI generated or this has a machine involved. And we make sure that that is very, very obvious and that no one is confused. That's one way we can approach this. And that might be a good way for some of these features. And maybe not for others, or maybe it might be a good way for all of them. We don't know yet. The second one is allowing communities to edit. So for example, for each one of these ideas, there's a way to directly edit the output of what we're getting. So for example, if there's a summary, there's an, a, uh, there's an edit button right next to that summary, and you can manually add or remove content from it. Or if you have a list of recommendations, there's an edit button next to those recommendations, and you can manually add or remove recommendations that you think might be good for that specific article or for that specific use case. There's also the possibility of configuration. So I don't know if some of you went to the session on community configuration, but we have been slowly looking at different kinds of ways to make entire features configurable. So we could also leave this up to the wikis, especially in these early experimental phases. We can say, hey, if you like this feature, um, the community can decide whether they want to turn it on, or maybe even later on, how much of, you know, kind of how many of the users you want to turn it on for in order to be able to perform a test and to see whether it's working or not. Or, you know, something else. Um, there might be so many other ways to involve communities and to give communities control over AI-generated content that we haven't thought of or they're not part of these three. And, you know, we wanted to take some time today with all of you to brainstorm on some of these ways and to try to think about kind of different ways that we can actually do this in, in a more real-life situation. So, right. That brings us to our brainstorming session. So we're going to split into groups, and there's quite a lot of you, so we might do some moving of the chairs around. But let's say let's split into groups into around seven or eight people. We can walk around and help you do that. 
And so for each group, we will give you a feature idea or a concept, one of the ones that you saw there on the slides. And we will try to, together, draft a moderation system that we can build so that we can allow communities some control over this AI-generated content. So we have some very specific questions for each feature as you're looking at it. The first one is, do you think editors need to play a role in this feature? And if you can, you can have someone take notes. Please add an explanation as to why you think yes and why you think no. So if yes, when do you think they should play this role? Should this be something that, you know, for example, like I was saying earlier, communities should decide to enable overall? Should this be something that is editable or something else? And if not, what guidelines do you think we should provide to make it clear to readers so that readers are not confused as to what is content that's generated by a machine and content that's generated by editors? How can we make that distinction clear? So once you talk a little bit about that in your group, what we're going to ask you to do is to sort of design the steps in a workflow or design the steps step by step of what that could look like. You can kind of write on the sheet of paper that we give you, or you can take notes otherwise. But what would it look like? Would it be an edit button? Would it be something else? Feel free to go. I keep saying the same few ideas because those are the ones I have, but feel free to be very creative about this as we, as we start to get going. And yeah, as you go along, make sure you have someone to write down your thoughts and then be prepared to share with the rest of the group at the end of the session. I think we're going to try to have about six or six to eight groups, depending on how folks split, split up. And then um, we'll be doing this for about 30 minutes, after which we'll go group by group and have someone give a little bit of, of a summary of what they thought about. And then at the very end, we'll have some Q&A and discussion. Does that sound good? All right, cool. OK, so try to split up into groups of six or seven. And I will walk around and hand you all um, the feature that you'll be working with.
Hey everyone, just very quick note, we have about 15 minutes left for discussion, so we're halfway through discussion time.
Hey, everyone. So we have about five minutes left of our discussion time. So I would say start wrapping up your notes and maybe choosing someone in your group uh, to sort of speak a little bit about what, what you talked about. But still five minutes left. All right, everyone, I think we can start wrapping up about a minute left and then we can start discussion.
All right. Um, just so we make sure we have enough <laughs> enough time for discussion, I think we're going to try to do about like five minutes for uh, each group. And yeah, I would say, you know, just kind of whoever wants to speak for the group, sort of, you know, kind of talk through your answers to these questions, but also anything interesting that you wanted to highlight on the conversation. We can keep it pretty flexible. You don't have to stick to the questions. Um, and yeah, anything interesting that you learned uh, on this topic. Um, another thing is if you took notes uh, and you're willing to give them to me afterwards, that would be amazing. Um, if you have physical notes, just feel free to hand them to me. Um, if you have digital notes, I made a couple of uh, slides at the end of the deck uh, that just says notes. Uh, you can kind of post a link there. Um, that would be super appreciated. Okay, um, any volunteers to go first? All right. So, uh, uh, I'm not sure if uh, this will be visible for you or uh, for the camera. Uh, so I will be describing it uh, in big detail. So uh, here we have an example of a uh, Wikipedia article uh, with a button summarize. Uh, I think it, it is a feature to summarize all the article in uh, one paragraph. So it gives uh, a summary generated by Wiki AI with short. Uh, content of this article, but uh, we were quick to figure out that uh, it, sh uh, it could be incorrect. So what to do in this case? As, uh, we uh, sort it over and figure out that uh, down there, sh uh, there should be a button, uh, a button report as incorrect. Uh, if user thinks that uh, anything here is incorrect, they press this button and they, uh, then they are prompted with this uh, interface. Uh, uh, on the top it uh, says what exactly is incorrect. Then there goes a uh, text box when uh, a user could uh, describe uh, uh, what exactly is incorrect and also some uh, common options uh, Quick, uh, quick options or template answers like uh, chunks of code uh, in the description or incorrect grammar or it contradicts itself or it is complete rubbish. And uh, uh, then they write or choose one of those answers and click uh, send and, and they, uh, they have a message that your feedback was saved. Uh, okay, and then it uh, it goes to uh, uh, a review to a patroller uh, because uh, 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 this uh, report could be incorrect, it could be malicious, it could be done by a vandal. So uh, to feed this feedback into the AI, it should be reviewed first uh, uh, whether it is genuine or not. Then there goes uh, a patroller interface where they are shown the summary which was given to the user, uh, uh, their comment and uh, options, uh, what to do with them. They can approve uh, this feedback and it would be fitted into the AI like in uh, uh, chat GPT where you uh, uh, reply to their uh, 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 chat GPT's message that you was incorrect, please rewrite it correctly and then it uh, uh, writes an updated version and you may again write that uh, now this is uh, uh, incorrect. So you are uh, giving the feedback to the uh, AI. There is an option to discard it uh, if uh, patroller does not agree with it and uh, if they think this is a vandalism or user being incorrect uh, or they can uh, edit the text of uh, an article itself uh, for the AI 
to use uh, a slightly different data to generate uh, uh, a summary. So this is roughly how we think that uh, should work, uh, but uh, um, it maybe it should be uh, someone should think it over for um, longer than half hour, I think. <laughs> Uh, that's all I think. Yes, yes, if you are willing to leave it to me. Thank you. And yeah, I actually, I really, really like this idea because I thought it had a good balance between like how much time it's asking from, from the editors and how much like impact it can have. Thank you. Yes, sorry. I would, no, I was just saying I, I like um, I like how this idea really kind of like thought about the amount of time. Like, you know, I think with a lot of these, there's a balance between like this is how much time it would take to actually moderate this properly, and this is how much time it actually um, would, you know, and that that could be too much or too little. And I thought this had really good good balance. So yeah, thank you. Um, who would like to go next? Wow, very bright. Uh, <laughs> I can't see anything. Um, I need it with sunglasses or something. Um, OK, so our group evaluated a concept where if you are reading a, an article, um, there would be a suggestion of what to read next. Um, so in this example, we're looking at the article for Winnipeg, a city in Canada. And the read next suggestion here is Manitoba, which is the state that it's in. Uh, there's also a little bit of a blurb here of what Manitoba is and then a reading list. And so uh, our uh, thought was that um, editors do not need to play a role in the feature, or at least not by default. Um, so the default uh, should be that if there were a reading list on the article that we would kind of replace the see also with a reading list. Um, so for example, if there are six or seven articles that editors have already uh, you know, said are related to Winnipeg, then we would show, we would show those. Um, but the top uh, would, could still be machine generated um, and that there would be the further ability to curate. And so I think the, the workflow um, that we thought about was there should always be a disclaimer when something is machine generated um, and then a uh, call to action to encourage users to contribute and refine uh, the suggestions. Um, so effectively, like a almost machine generation is a um, like a stopgap uh, or like a um, a filler uh, where there is no content that is has been touched by editors or contributors. Is that it? Okay. Um, and also, if you have any notes, uh, can you put them on the slide? Okay. So, uh, we were assigned the uh, three features uh, related to suggestions to the reader or editor about uh, articles uh, related to either our current position or the article we are currently viewing uh, and uh, so uh, viewing either related articles through a graph or through a list of recommended articles. Um, as uh, general rules that we uh, um, settled to, uh, there was the fact that uh, all of these should be uh, approved by the local community, so the wiki that would uh, uh, apply them, and that uh, the, these should be isolated from the rest, rest of the content and clearly labeled, for example, with a small box that contains them with a, a, a disclaimer. Also, if uh, uh, these uh, uh, tools uh, for recommendations uh, use uh, some uh, 
uh, information about the behavior of the user, this will first off obviously have legal repercussions to be considered, but also it should be strictly uh, obtained and uh, allowing the user to choose whether to uh, accept uh, to give his uh, uh, information, his uh, uh, behavior information to, for these recommendations. Also, uh, editors uh, uh, regarding the questions of uh, uh, regarding the features, uh, editors should not have any new uh, role in this because uh, the content of the articles is already uh, subject to a series of roles and uh, procedures for content moderation. And since this is only a recommendation system for new articles, it should not uh, uh, create new roles. As uh, uh, a flow for uh, the steps that will be required, uh, um, well, the only case in which editors uh, will be uh, included in this, uh, in this with some role will be if uh, this uh, um, graph, for example, or also uh, uh, related articles had uh, uh, some feature of recommendation to the editor about possible missing connections from the current uh, article to other articles that are not currently linked and will deserve uh, uh, to be connected uh, through a write-up. And uh, in this case, ob obviously, the editor will be uh, have a role, but uh, it will be uh, the the first role beyond the, the uh, uh, approval from the community and the opt-in of the editor into this feature will be that the once the editor goes to the page, uh, he uh, can see a button to show him uh, the uh, graph recommendation uh, with the, the possible new connections, and he has uh, the duty to manually understand and choose if and how it is uh, uh, correct to include these recommendations. Uh, obviously, all of these recommendations sh should have some uh, discard button so to allow the user to discard and report as incorrect uh, articles that are not, uh, uh, recommendations that are not uh, worth it. Hey there, uh, our group were also assigned the summarize, AI summary feature for the Hedy Lamar article. Uh, and yeah, I mean, basically the answer to the qu first question is, we do think that editors should play a role, but mostly the team were uh, in favor of this feature and wanted to kind of have that ability to improve and edit in case, you know, there's a hallucination or there's anything that's wrong with the uh, article. Um, so very similar to the first group uh, in that respect. Uh, there, is a, there was a little bit of reservation of like how much time we should have editors spending on this task. So again, it was more of a correcting after the fact and yeah, giving both uh, editors and readers the opportunity, like having a link or a button at the end to say, hey, this is wrong and, you know, highlight the things that might need to change. Um, uh, I mean, even though we said yes to question uh, question A, uh, we did think that the guidelines currently are, is pretty good. So, so I'm just answering the question about um, what guidelines should we provide if no. But we think if yes, but also the guidelines at the moment where it says simple summary generated by Wiki AI is like a pretty good indication that's very clear at the top of the article potentially adding in some sort of like info icon so that people know where it comes from um, and how it's uh, generated. Uh, yeah, so one of the ideas that came up was, um, I guess based on a question of whether the AI generates it every time someone presses the summarize article and the thought was that maybe it shouldn't, it should just be one summary that maybe is periodically updated you know, if we see that there's like content that's been added, et cetera, or if someone detects that something's wrong with it. Um, so Issa noticed that the uh, summary is quite uh, interestingly summarized and 
And perhaps it's just because it's chronologically summarized, but it talks about how she was a famous actress first before the fact that she was a scientist as well. So whether, um, yeah, so, and then it kind of talks about her husband, where do we really need to talk about this person in relation to her husband and how normally in like their community, they try to like weed out that content. So that's potentially one way they would um, moderate the content. And then um, someone else mentioned the idea of like maybe also enable editors the uh, ability to prompt the AI proactively to create a summary uh, and then give pointers about what it should and shouldn't include. Uh, yeah, I think that was it. Thanks. So my um, group was also working on the uh, recommendations feature the one with the like Manitoba and the city. I don't remember the name, sorry. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, first of all, we seem to disagree with the former group because <laughs> uh, our group uh, came to the conclusion that some um, level of control of the community uh, would be needed. And um, Mm, not only that, also readers' control uh, should be taken into account, um, and readers uh, could be like allowed maybe to uh, leave feedback uh, as simple as thumbs up. I like this recommendation, mm, and immediately, of course, uh, there was a question like, are we taking into into account the mm, Amount of infor personal um, was the was the term like personal ident ident identifiable information, right? The like how do, are we tra are we tracking our users and and uh, are these recommendations personalized or is it more like others other readers um, read those articles, therefore we are recommending those articles to you. There was also um, an idea about pruning the the tree of uh, recommendations. So, for example, uh, to um, avoid enforcing existing bias uh, or some like um, improper links between articles in in certain to topics. Uh, regarding the second um, question, because of the limited capacity of uh, communities um, controlling the recommendations on a per article basis would be not feasible, so the community configuration could be a better option. And then uh, we also had a discussion about like the, the level of recommendations. So for example, um, maybe I should, as an, as an editor, uh, I should be allowed to enable or disable the recommendations as a feature per article. Um, or as a reader, I should have uh, some control in terms of, um, I mean, I, I should be able to choose the uh, most relevant or most popular articles. Yeah, and in, in ge general, this uh, control over the the uh, feature should be really easy. And also, we at the very beginning of our discussion were uh, discussing where this feature should be displayed, like whether it should be uh, on the side of the article uh, area, content area, or maybe uh, below it as in the former mobile uh, feature. Yeah, thanks. All right, we are doing so well on time, everyone. Okay, we have, thank you all for all of your ideas. And yes, again, please give me um, any notes you took. Um, those would be really, really valuable. Okay, so now to wrap up, we have about, 10 minutes um, that we can use for whatever you want. So I think uh, what well, we can use them is kind of for an open sort of discussion. Um, 
how did this make you feel? I have some questions, but also if you have any questions for, uh, for me too, I'd be happy to answer. But in general, I'm curious sort of how does this make you feel about the future of features like this and about your ability to moderate or edit or, you know, kind of control them in any, uh, in any way? And also any kind of general thoughts about sort of machine generated content and AI beginning to enter into the wikis in, in small and subtle ways? Yeah, one interesting hello, hello. One interesting question that came up for us, um, I think, was is this working? Yeah. yeah? Oh, okay, great. Um, one interesting question that I think came up. Oh, there we go. One interesting question that that arose for me that here, which I think was mentioned uh, a bit earlier, was this idea that if there's AI generated summaries or, or content on Wikipedia in some way, then in terms of the the moderation angle, we kind of have two choices. Like, it can either generate for every user each time, and then you know you're getting up to date information, but you don't know exactly what they're seeing. Like it could be all these subtle differences or, or things that are wrong and, and it's hard for moderators to understand what exactly users are seeing, which is not ideal. The alternative is then that there's a kind of a one-time generation and then you're editing it or you've got to decide how often it updates or um, now you've got this extra bit of content for every single page that you need to, to sort of track. And is the effort of that actually worth it compared to just writing something like that from scratch? And I think that's just like kind of an interesting trade-off that, that came up for us. So our group actually looked at two different uh, use cases and we kind of pivoted halfway through. Um, but one thing that stuck out to me, and maybe this exists and um, it's just not readily available or, or maybe I'm just living under a rock, um, but I think that um, a, to, to me, I feel like the concept of machine generated content entering the wikis um, is almost somewhat inevitable. Um, and it's a question of how, and it's a question of what's appropriate. And I think if we have to revisit the, like, the, the question, Sam, you just brought up of having, um, you know, do you generate it once, you know, and be all end all or multiple times for each person or each use case, um, that's a question that we probably could solve with the principle and then use that as a guiding principle of how we, how and when we build uh, with with machine generated content. And so I think the thing that I took away from this conversation the most was that like need of uh, setting up that framework and the guidelines of how machine generated content shows up on wikis. And I think it could then be very easy to make decisions of you know, where it goes. One of the things you'd asked was about how we feel after this. I'm fr I feel very hopeful that uh, this, this is, you know, from what I'm hearing people here, is that this is something that we can do, something that we are not afraid of, but we also know needs to be handled just the right way. I really like what I'm hearing from a lot of people, and I hope this is, uh, so these, some of these suggestions are, and ideas are incorporated into these when they're eventually deployed. No promises, like I said. Um, <laughs> some of them might or might not be, but uh, we are we are starting. Um, all right, well, I think that brings us to the end of the session. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, I look forward to reading in your notes a little bit more in depth. And yeah, I'm, I'm also feeling hopeful and excited for the future and to sort of, you know, kind of make the wikis better, which is nice. Thank you all.